I am making high quality background trees using super trees from Scenic Express on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I am making background trees using a natural plant material called sea foam, which is sold by Scenic Express under the name Super Trees. It's also sold by other various vendors as well. Now, sea foam is a Scandinavian plant, which is a distant cousin to the North American sagebrush that we're all very familiar with. It makes fantastic tree armatures as it has a very delicate branch structure that looks very much like miniature deciduous trees. Now, sea foam or super trees can be used in a variety of ways to make different sizes and types of trees. And today I'm going to be showing you probably the simplest use for super trees, that is to make small background trees, but I'm working on a whole series of videos about a variety of ways to make different kinds and sizes of trees out of sea foam, so you'll want to watch for those videos as they come. But now, let's go get started making some background trees. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. Here is a one quarter bushel case of super trees from Scenic Express. You can also buy them from Scenic Express in a larger case, and you can find them all at their website at sceneryexpress.com. This case claims to produce 20 to 30 trees, which is probably true in HO scale or larger scales, but working in N scale, you can produce many more trees than that. In fact, you can produce dozens. The case will contain a number of very nice, natural looking armatures like these right out of the box. But today, we're going to be setting these nicely formed armatures aside and working with the less perfect looking material in the box. These are some of those pieces. I'm going to use the pieces to create several smaller trees. The first step for using sea foam material in any form is to remove the remaining dried leaves that will be connected to the armatures. A pair of tweezers and some care will do the trick. Many of the main branches of the sea foam will have a bend in them. For making larger trees, these will need to be straightened. Now you can do this with a soldering iron or by steaming and hanging them with weight. This will not be an issue for our project today, however, so I will show you how to straighten them in a future video when we work with larger armatures. Next, I broke off some of the branches from this piece of sea foam to create several smaller tree armatures. For my current scenery project, I need smaller mesquite trees for a scene in North Texas. Mesquite trees in this area are an average of 15 to 40 feet in height. To prepare my super tree material, I used a scrap of styrene which I marked at a scale 15 feet, 30 feet, and 40 feet to quickly gauge the height of my armatures. Now, I'd like to say a word about tree height here. I often hear modelers talk about how model trees are often too short for their scale, and this is often true. What is important, however, is to know the sizes of the trees that normally grow in the area that you model. In old growth oak forests, trees can be 80 to 90 feet tall. In old growth pine forests, they can grow to 120 feet or more. In the area of the Midwest where I live, most mature trees are 50 to 60 feet tall. But the area of North Texas where I'm modeling is quite arid and the common mesquite trees there are much smaller. So pay attention to the size of trees in the area that you model and model them accordingly. I cut pieces of the sea foam material that matched the height range that I needed and I soaked each armature in a 3 to 1 bath of water and Mod Podge to seal the sea foam material. You can also use glycerin for this, as is recommended by Scenic Express, and it is available on their website as well. I've had good luck with the Mod Podge, however, so that's what I'll be using today. I did have one tree that needed a bit of straightening. This tree I soaked a little bit longer and then hung it upside down with a clothespin weighing down the end, which straightened it well enough. I took some very short bits of super tree material that broke off and 
prepped them as well to use as sprouts and bushes in my scene. After soaking each armature, I shook off the excess Mod Podge and laid them out on a newspaper. When making small trees like this, you can produce dozens and dozens of trees from a single box of super trees. When the armatures had had time to drip on the newspaper, I laid them out carefully on a separate clean sheet of white paper to dry. Again, for larger trees, I would have hung these to dry, but for these small trees, this will work fine. I spray painted these armatures with inexpensive gray primer spray paint. This paint should only be used in a well-ventilated area or a spray booth. I painted this one at the workbench for the sake of video, but I painted all of the others outside. A light mist will cover the beige armatures with a much more realistic color. After painting, I placed them in a scrap of styrofoam to dry. I didn't paint them in the foam as the solvents in the paint will eat the foam. Instead, I held the tree trunks with my hand and a nitrile glove while painting them. Nitrile gloves are important here as other types of gloves may be dissolved by the solvents in the paint. Let me pause here to say that if you like this video and would like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. These are background trees that I'm making today, so this one dark color is sufficient. If I was making foreground trees, I would have used a lighter gray paint to paint the armatures and then dusted the outer branches with the darker color. When the paint had dried, it was time to start applying foliage. For these trees, I used Woodland Scenic's light green coarse turf. I used just the one color. For these background trees, this material will provide plenty of detail. To adhere the foliage, I will need a spray adhesive. I'll share with you three options that I commonly use. First is 3M Super 77. This is a fantastic adhesive, which I also use for applying photo backdrops, but you do not want to breathe this stuff, so use it with a ventilator and work in a well-ventilated area. Elmer spray adhesive will also work very well, but again, protect your lungs when you use it. I have a link to both of these adhesives in my Amazon Pick of the Week in the description down below as they are very useful for a variety of model railroad projects, so you'll want to check that out. The cheapest option for this particular application is to use inexpensive Super Hold Hairspray. I like this Aquanet Unscented Hairspray and this is what I'm going to be using for these trees today. With a few trees in a scrap of styrofoam, I spray the branches well with the adhesive, trying to keep it off of the trunks as much as possible. I usually do this over a trash can, but this newspaper will work to catch the overspray for the sake of video. I then dab the ground foam onto the branches, pushing it lightly onto each tree. I work over a piece of newspaper or a large container to catch the excess foliage for reuse. When the foliage is applied, I tap the foam to dislodge any loose foliage. If I'm not happy with the amount of foliage on the trees, I simply apply another application of the adhesive and another layer of the foliage. Again, tap away the excess and repeat as necessary until you're happy with the look of the trees. Try to remove any foliage that sticks to the trunks or lower branches with a toothpick. When the tree is finished, I then apply a last layer of hairspray, regardless of what adhesive I used first, to seal everything in place. After everything is dry, these trees are ready to plant. I simply make a hole in the scenery base, dip the trunk in some white glue, and plant them into the scene. These trees make fantastic background trees, and in my case, they blend in well with the trees on the photo backdrop to create a sense of distance that I really love. To see more about making a variety of different kinds of trees and other Model Railroad content, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me on Tuesdays to see even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tin Lizzie?